Collegiate Conference, the Player of the Year in that conference, Sherry Norgard. A familiar last name to Phoenix basketball fans, 22 points, 7 rebounds the game. The three seed in this region is UCLA. The Player of the Year in the Pac-10 Conference for the Pac-10 champions, Maylana Martin. Outstanding, 18 and a half points, 9 and a half rebounds. Kathy Olivier, the long-awaited next year after the disappointment of last year's NCAA tournament, Pac-10 championship, a first at UCLA. Kevin Borseth, the head coach at Wisconsin Green Bay, is in his very first year. 11 great years at NCAA Division II Michigan Tech. All right, Heather Cox, what are we looking for tonight? Well, Wisconsin Green Bay is not known for its size or athleticism, but they are very smart. UCLA, on the other hand, loves to run up and down the court. The key tonight is Maylana Martin and Janae Hubbard. They're two low-post players. Whether or not they can stay out of foul trouble, Green Bay, a very smart offensive team. They take the high percentage shot. They want to keep this ball game in the 50s. Janae Hubbard and the Bruins, on the other hand, want to get into the 70s or 80s. Both coaches talked a lot about tempo. UCLA talked a little bit about last year and a chance at redemption this year. And we're underway with the Bruins in control. Wisconsin Green Bay opens up in a tight pressure man-to-man -man defense. We'll see that the entire 40 minutes. Philman inside to Martin, and Melana Martin is on the board. Bruins with a 2-0 lead. Becky Knudsen is the point guard for Wisconsin Green Bay. Ann Warden. Patricia Abel. Marie Philman the rebound. Out to Gomez, one of the great point guards in America. Gomez. A distributor, and she misses her first shot. And already you're seeing UCLA strength going up and down the court and getting the rebound off the miss. Norgard, her first touch. That's where the Bruins would like to see her get the ball way out high. Well, and that's what Coach Petra Borseth also wants to see Norgard get the ball high. She's very good on the low blocks, but they don't think she can be successful against UCLA on those blocks. They're really going to try and move her out to the 10, 15 foot line, have her penetrate or dish off. Trisha Abel missed the three. The double team comes quickly to Martin. And a Wisconsin Green Bay foul. Very tough to double team this UCLA squad when both Hubbard and Martin are in the ballgame. If you try to advantage Martin at 6-3, Hubbard at 6-4, you double team one of them. The other one's wide open unless you have some great help and recovery defense. This is Marie Philman. Martin trying to back in, and the Bruins turn it over, trying to get her the basketball. Philman walks. And give a lot of credit to Trisha Abel, just a freshman, knowing what type of player Philman is. She's not going to throw it up from that far away. So Abel sagged off a little bit, leaving things very clogged to get the ball inside to Martin. The Phoenix did not start their season well. In fact, they were 4-9 and nine at one point this year. It'll stay at Wisconsin Green Bay ball. But this is a ball club that has won 15 straight basketball games to deliver themselves a first-round game. Look at that, 15-0 and 0 after a 4-9 and nine start, and they had a very competitive MCCC Conference Championship. In fact, they had two games where they had to come from behind, so they got some experience late in the season. Lucretia Flanagan with her first touch. This is Gomez. And she hits a three. And any time Erica Gomez can score, it's an extra bonus for the UCLA Bruins. Kathy Olivier doesn't ask her point guard to score. She wants her to distribute, open things up for her teammates. Abel. Filming through the screen will pick up a foul. Erica Gomez playing with so much confidence. The redshirt junior suffering so many injuries in her career. Finally healthy, and she's feeling it. She's pumped up. You can see the energy, the fire in her eyes at practice, at shoot around. She is ready to get the job done this year. Martin deflects it out of bounds. Certainly the carryover from last year. The, the disappointing, excruciating, I don't know how you can term it, the loss, the controversial loss to Alabama. UCLA has been pointing towards this day for an entire year. Yeah, it has been all about redemption up until this point. It's been talk. Now they are able to act on the revenge, the controversial loss. They should have gone to the Sweet 16, but a timing error against Alabama 
and Kathy Olivier and the Bruins went home. The shot clock was reset, and I think that's what Olivier was upset with right now. Norgard has yet to get it in the low blocks where she's most effective, and she still won't get it. Here comes Flanagan, the crossover, and the finish. Lucretia Flanagan has been so important to this team, scored in double figures the last 13 games, has upped her scoring percentage, definitely the most improved player on this squad. Knudsen is fouled by Flanagan, and early on, Heather, it does not look like Wisconsin Green Bay is controlling the tempo, and that was at the top of Kevin Borses' list. Yeah, he really wants to slow this down, but with Flanagan and Gomez running, it's very tough. Somebody has got to get a body, step in there. Don't make it so easy to go north to south for Flanagan. Good ball movement. This is what we've seen all season long from the Phoenix. Zone look from UCLA. Abel has missed two threes. And Hubbard has been dominant early on the boards. Yeah, first the block, then the defensive board gets this team running. Hubbard will take the jumper. She can do that. She has the range. Very nice shooting touch and rotation. Abel, a difficult shot. And again, Hubbard just patrolling the board. Gomez to Philman. And Warden with the rebound. And UCLA is running like crazy, and they can do it. They have the depth. In fact, you see Michelle Greco get off the bench, the freshman, to come in. Kathy Olivier will use fresh legs all 40 minutes of this ballgame. Norgard finally gets it in the low blocks. Knudsen misses a three. Hubbard couldn't control it. And Wisconsin Green Bay has got to start shooting the ball a little bit better. This is a team that shoots 50% from the field. The double team by Norgard forcing the poor shooting percentage. Nice job recognizing the double team and trying to dish off, but Wisconsin Green Bay has got to get better looks, higher percentage shots. There was a reset on the shot clock. UCLA now in a zone, which could make it even more difficult to get the ball to Norgard. Right, you have to prove it from the outside when you're in a zone, and I don't know that the Phoenix have the guards to consistently knock it down from long range. Gotta get a shot off. Knudsen got the three. Nice bounce on the road for Becky Knudsen, the senior point guard. Can knock it down. She's their top three-point shooter. And Wisconsin Green Bay goes four and a half minutes before their first point. And now look, the pace has slowed down off the main basket. Impossible for the Bruins to run, so as long as you're shooting well, you can slow down the tempo of the game. Gomez and Greco both in the lineup at the same time, and Gomez, a rare mistake. And that's something that will frustrate Gomez. I think more than anything, she doesn't look at the number of rebounds, the number of points, it's the number of turnovers. Krieger. Hubbard gets every rebound there is. Well, she had 12 against Arizona State, a career high. Check that 22. Twelve offensive boards, so Hubbard knows how to get it done. Skip past the filming. Put was on the line. Knudsen with the offside rebound. Kentucky has won tonight. They defeated Nebraska, a six seed beating an 11. It was a tight ball game, a 98-92 final. Norgard gets a rebound, and she's going to the free throw line. And that's something that we need to see Sherry Norgard do quite a bit. Battle inside, be aggressive, use her elbows, and really play the physical, aggressive style that UCLA does. Nice job slashing to the basket this time, and just boxes out Martin, gets better position in between Martin and Philman. A very nice read to the basket on our teammate shot. And Norgard's not somebody that you want to send to the line. Sherry Norgard is 83% from the foul line. Just an amazing. Both of these teams, and I think it's endemic to women's basketball, free throw shooting is not a problem. In the men's game, it's really a problem. Especially when your leading scorer is also your leading free throw shooter. She's aggressive, can penetrate, and get to the line. They're going to be very successful. Sherry Norgard is on the board. That's good news for Wisconsin Green Bay in Poly tonight. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament is brought to you by Michelin because so much is riding on your time. And by Scott Lawn Products for a great lawn guarantee.
Southern California to face UCLA. The Badgers beat the Bruins in the Rose Bowl. University of Wisconsin, Green Bay, and UCLA, first round, West Region. The Bruins, the three seed, the Pac-10 Conference champions. From the floor, Wisconsin, Green Bay has struggled mightily. That's the bad news. And don't forget, Wisconsin, Green Bay used to shooting 50% from the field on the season. Credit the Bruins, tight defense. Melanie Pearson in the game for UCLA. She misses a three. The good news, it's a two-point ball game. Norgard. I think UCLA doing a nice job confusing Wisconsin Green Bay. Every time down the floor, Kathy Olivier is changing the defensive set. One is man, two is a two, three, three is a three, two. Crossing the arms is trapped, so you'll watch Kathy Olivier every time down, giving a new defensive stance to really make it tough for Wisconsin Green Bay's point guard to adjust. Zone off the inbound, Krieger. This is Tilke, and she hits her first shot. Melanie Tilke, a sophomore, struggled with injuries early on, had a lower leg stress fracture, lost her starting spot to the freshman Abel. Tilke still coming off the bench, but good minutes, averaging more than six points a game. Three seconds in the lane for UCLA. And Norgard looking a little shaken up. Last possession actually just runs into a wall. And Janae Hubbard right here trying to get position. And Norgard still walking it off. That's tough. Janae Hubbard, six foot four, a very big physical player. Norgard has had a lot of different people banging on her back already tonight. Pearson forces that turnover. Martin. It's seven. Seven minutes in. We talk about Norgard having a lot of pressure on her tonight. All season long, she's been double, triple, even quadruple teamed. Cleveland State, they say, played five on one against Norgard. Norgard only took two shots the entire evening. Lucretia Flanagan. Lucretia Flanagan. She's got four. And I think Flanagan is the quickest player in the Pac-10, and you can see why that first step so explosive. She puts it into overdrive and just blows right past you. Silky against Flanagan. But Martin and Norgard are having a great battle in blocks right now. Knutson, another turnover for Wisconsin Green Bay. Lucretia Flanagan averaging 17 points in Pac-10 play, and you can see why. She reads the defense. She decides to go all the way to the hole. This is a player who I think is the fastest in the conference. Second, maybe Julia Gray, the point guard at Washington, but I think Flanagan would beat her in a 40. UCLA is a, not a young team. They're very experienced, but they don't have a senior in their starting lineup. Yeah, watch out. They'll be back in the dance next year, too. Four juniors and a sophomore in the starting five. Greco missed the shot, fouled on the rebound. Greco, another one of those players that Kathy Olivier recruited to fit into the style of Bruin basketball. And that's quick, that's unpepo and athletic. Greco, just a freshman, comes in and just ignites this team. A spark off the bench, a great defensive player against the point. Looking for a DL, huh?
lead now to nine. And that's a literal run with the missed shots by the Phoenix. UCLA doing a nice job getting the defensive board, the outlet pass, filling the lane, and scoring up these buckets. Tilty walk. Sixth turnover for Wisconsin Green Bay. And right now, a couple of things that I think Green Bay needs to do. One, slow down, continue to sag in defensively, not allow the ball to go inside to Martin or Spanicello. Take advantage of the fact that Janae Hubbard is out of the ball game right now. Pearson missed a three. And a foul on Lucretia Flanagan. I like the idea by Pearson, though. If she can open things up on the outside, she just had a nice three from the wing position. That makes Wisconsin Green Bay respect the Bruins' perimeter game, and it opens things up for May Martin, Janae Hubbard, and Carly Funicello. We asked Kathy Olivier today what the biggest concern about this ball game. She said foul trouble, and Lucretia Flanagan now has two personals. And I think that's okay. They've got the depth at the guard position. Sure, they'd love to have Trish in this ball game, but what they can't have happen is Martin or Hubbard to have to sit for serious minutes during this game. Melanie Tilkey. Man, look at Flanagan right back down the other side. She's getting the shot. She's getting the open look. She's just not getting the glass to make it fall. And again, something that Wisconsin Green Bay needs to do. They know that they have to penetrate. They can't play catch-and-shoot basketball. That also draws the foul. Wisconsin Green Bay, a very aggressive team, known for getting to the line quite a bit, and they need to continue that pace tonight.
seat. The winner of this game will face on Monday. And the travel by Monica Greco. Gomez with steps. Six minutes left, first half. Norgard. Was it deflected? No, just a bad pass. And right now, Norgard and her teammates forcing the issue too much. I think they're so concerned with the height disadvantage that they're doing the extra pass. Normally, they wait for the high percentage shot. In this case, the last couple of possessions, I think they've made one pass too many. Norgard saw the opening. She could have just driven straight to the basket. They're the turnovers. Nine now for Wisconsin Green Bay. If you ask Kevin Borseth if he had this many turnovers and shoot this poorly at this stage of the game, he would have told you we'd be down by 25 at this point. Film in the miss. But he is the first to say, hey, our ball handling's a little bit suspect. We need to take care of the ball. He stressed the two most important things. He said in the tournament, everybody talks about rebounding and defense. We need to score and take care of the ball. The Women's NCAA Basketball Championship continues on the deuce. We start in the east with Maine and Old Dominion. Tomorrow, 1 Eastern. Second round in the west, Penn State and Louisiana Tech. Xavier and UConn in the mid-east. That's at 9 Eastern. Then at 11 Eastern, to Moby Arena in Colorado State and Southwest Missouri State. For more on the Women's Championship, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com. Knudsen from the line. The Fighting Phoenix trying to stay close. They almost weren't the Fighting Phoenix. That's a good story. In 1970, the students at Wisconsin Green Bay took a vote. They were called the Bay Badgers after they're the bigger school in the state. And the students said, we want to be the Fighting Tomatoes.
and she was calm, cool, collected, very relaxed, and hey, I've had an up and down year, but I am fired up, ready to play. She's watched a lot of tape, gone in with private sessions with Kathy Olivier, and knows exactly what it's going to take tonight, and she is cleaning up on the glass. She rips down her sixth rebound. being effective. 
factor, and we're not talking about our injuries, it's pretty important. Just a junior, Pac-10 player of the year. Knudsen. Krieger. Silky had a pretty good first half. Tough to find bright spots with the Phoenix in that first half. We've seen a lot more motion in the offense this time. And Warden with a three. And that's just her second three-point of the entire season. Two for ten now in the year. I guess you can't leave her open, though. And just a second by Wisconsin Green Bay all night. Hubbard, another rebound. And another bucket. And you have to give so much credit to Janae Hubbard. She's played aggressive but smart basketball. Just one personal foul in the first half. That's huge because she's getting a lot more minutes than she's accustomed to. The foul trouble that Kathy Olivier feared has not arrived. At least not yet. Again, the miss. And the follow inside. Stacy Krieger. Bruins continue to try to push it. 16-point ball game. Biggest lead was 21. And a UCLA turnover. And now that things have slowed down a little bit, it's time for the Phoenix to take charge, be aggressive, try and run, get some movement and some motion into your offense. They've been known all season for ball movement, smart, crisp passes, limit the turnovers, look for the high shot. Backdoor cut. And this is Norgard. This is the Sherry Norgard that we were expecting to see. A slow first half, just four field goal attempts, but now she's been more aggressive. She's going hard. Watch the back door, the quick jab step, and then the dish. Draws Martin, says, I'm going to go wide open to my teammate Sherry Norgard. Gets the point, goes to the line. Don't forget, she shoots 83% from the free throw line. She's 3 of 3 tonight. 11 now for Norgard. And Wisconsin Green Bay creeps back within 13. Martin. She almost throws it away. Nice save by Gomez. Gomez out to Flanagan for three. Gordon the rebound. And the Phoenix on a little bit of a run right now. the steal. Gomez holds on to it. Oh, the no look to Hubbard and she wasn't Hubbard looking. Hubbard wasn't looking either. She faked us all out. Norgard, nice seal on the pass there low and Norgard's now got 13 points and UCLA has to take a timeout. A 21-point lead has melted to 11. Well, if you're really into women's college basketball and this NCAA championship, you've got to get ESPN full court. For instance, tomorrow, you could watch these games. Number 22, Alabama. Number 13, North Carolina. Illinois and Clemson. Arizona and Rutgers. Oregon and Iowa State. Call 1-800-DIRECTV or 1-800-PRIMESTAR to subscribe to ESPN full court. Sherry Norgard and the Phoenix on the rise right now. Scores from around the country. Purdue is through. No big shocks in the tournament today. Some close ball games. NC State with a first round win. Martin. Melana Martin stops that run. And you can see by her full stride moving up and down the court with such fluidity that her back is not bothering her normally. Short, choppy steps because of those three degenerative discs in her back. Tonight it doesn't look like they're bothering her. Not on that one. The good denial defense. The lead is 13 for the Pac-10 champions. 15 and a half left at Pauly. Last game, first round, West Region. Kentucky defeats Nebraska. They're through the winner of this game on ESPN Monday night. Southwest Missouri State beats Santa Barbara. Colorado State had a scare from Cal State Northridge. Those two meet tomorrow on the Deuce. Mild upset Southwest Missouri State over UC Santa Barbara. Aaron Busher from Santa Barbara didn't have enough. Everybody was surprised at that low seat in Santa Barbara. Big fans.
Wednesday committee looked good by losing. Right now, Kevin Borseth and Wisconsin Green Bay trying to fight their way back into this thing. UCLA has it, had a 21-point lead in the early stages of this half. But Wisconsin Green Bay brought it back to 11. And the difference, Sherry Norgard has been much more active. Oh, Martin with the block.
Well, we've talked about the playing time for Janae Hubbard. Kathy Olivier has had her out of foul trouble. You can see her on the bench. She's getting a rest right now, eight minutes in. And just one personal foul. So this is more about rest and fresh legs than foul trouble. Be interesting, a much smaller lineup Funicello is in, but not as physical as Hubbard. Look for her to come back in should Green Bay continue to roll. Olivier waiting for that TV timeout, which comes now. Next dead ball under this 12-minute mark. A travel. And Olivier gets the timeout now. 12 minutes left. Kevin Borseth and the Phoenix won't die in Los Angeles. Thanks, Robin. I, I think he feels a lot like UCLA felt last year after that controversial finish. Yeah, I think Kathy, Olivier, and Lewis could chat about that. Yeah. <laughs> They didn't let UCLA leave Alabama with the win last year. 51-42, UCLA, a big first half. In fact, they stretched it to a 21-point ball game early in the second, but Wisconsin-Green Bay has answered. A lot more hustle, more aggressive play offensively, and that's led to 73% field goal shooting for the Phoenix in the second half. Conversely, their defense has forced UCLA into a shooting slump just 27%. May Martin back into the game, hoping to get some high percentage shots and quickly turn that stat around. Wisconsin Green Bay with the ball and 24 seconds on the shot clock. Amanda Leonard in running the point for the Phoenix. A zone look from the Bruins. Norgard surrounded in low. Gets it in a crowd. Nice kick right back out. And Tilke. Makes the Bruins pay for the sagging defense. Eight now for Tokyo. Nice assist for Norgard. And it is a seven-point ball game. And, you know, Tokyo is quietly really getting the job done for the Phoenix. And the Phoenix with an opportunity to shave it down even more. Norgard just surrounded. Both Pearson and Martin really working on denying her the ball, fronting her. Without penetration, they've been unable to get her the ball in the zone. What they need to do is light it up from the outside, really force the Bruins to honor that shot. There's the penetration, and there's the dish. Norgard's got 19. Quick, good ball movement. Draw the double team, dish it off. Five-point ball game. The Bruins asleep right now at the wheel. Flanagan hits the two. Her foot was on the line. A lot of people wondered if Sherry Norgard's numbers were possibly a little bit inflated because of the competition in the Midwestern Collegiate Conference. I think right now she's proving that she can play in any conference. Abel can't save the miss. This is big right now. Janae Hubbard coming back into the ballgame. Won't be quite as easy to get the ball inside to Norgard. That score, you see Kentucky and Nebraska. Kentucky winning earlier tonight here at Pauley Pavilion. They'll take on the winner of this one. Wisconsin Green Bay and UCLA. The interesting thing, UCLA has faced both opponents in this sub-regional. Kentucky and Nebraska in the first tournament of the season. They beat both squads. So team. And that was on a neutral floor as well. Martin is fouled. She'll go to the line. Yeah, the Bruins got an incredible seed. They earned every bit of it because of their very tough preseason conference. Very happy to be playing at home. Nice high-low rotation this time. It's Hubbard to Martin, and I like this Bruin lineup when both Martin and Hubbard are in the ballgame. Really changes the entire complexion. We talk about UCLA getting to play at home in the first and second round. The good news for the Bruins, should they advance to the Sweet 16, get to go across town just about 15 miles down the road, play at USC. So conceivably could play at home all the way up until the Final Four in San Jose. You never leave the state of California. No, it's amazing how their fortunes have turned from last year and the trip to Alabama. And I think their preseason schedule really helped getting such a high seat, also playing in a tough conference. But five of their seven losses came to top 25 teams, six to tournament teams. And I think the committee really weighed that in. Deflected, it stays with Wisconsin Green Bay. Well, if they can get to Los Angeles, USC's side of Los Angeles and the West region, if they get through there, they just have to head north. Tilke. Fouled on the drive. But right now, Wisconsin...
punch in Green Bay won't go away. I've been impressed with the composure. Give a lot of credit to Kevin Borseth. Whatever he did at the half certainly helped. Kathy Olivier's squad came out flat in the second half. Borseth's squad came out fired up, ready to go. The steal by Lucretia Flanagan. Ten for Flanagan. And in the blink of an eye, it's back to an 11-point ball game. We're seeing a little bit of pressure here by the Bruins. Want to force some more Green Bay turnovers. Also take some seconds off the shot clock. Hail ball. Watch the quickness by Flanagan. And the leap. Look at the hurt. Just 5'5". Five, five. They say she's 5'7". But she's 5'5". Five, five and she can grab the rim and she can convert on the steal. It's a 14-point lead, and the pressure has really unraveled Wisconsin Green Bay. Norgard goes down. Wide open, and she wasn't on the line. I, I thought she was. She wasn't. Good job by the officials. Wide open for the three. And you notice Lucretia Flanagan's the one that's starting these Bruin runs. It's taking her to ignite this team. UCLA has gone back to man-to-man. -to -man. Norgard in the block. And that pass is coming your way, Heather Cox. Turnover. Turnover. Give me some tennies. Speaking of tennies, freshman for Green Bay, Trisha Abel showed up to shoot arounds without her tennis shoes, as only a freshman can yesterday. Had to play in her coach's shoes. Coach, meanwhile, was up and down the court in his white socks. Loose ball out of bounds. It'll stay UCLA's. The Bruins, the three seed in the West. Pac-10 co-champions with Oregon. The Pac-10 in the women's tournament, women's championship, has fared much better than in the men's side. The men 0 for 4 after the huge upset by Gonzaga over Stanford. Martin the miss. On the women's side, Arizona, Oregon, and UCLA still alive. Stanford the only one in that by Maine. Gonzaga Bulldogs. Looking good. Spoken like a true guy from the Northwest, yeah, right? Well, I had a chance to see them all year long and had their championship game here on ESPN at the West Coast Conference, and that's not a surprise. Here we're in the West region. First round games. Women's championship. Wisconsin Green Bay. Sherry Norgard now with 21 points. She tries to keep the Phoenix close to the Pac-10 champion. Gomez. Hubbard should go to the line. And somebody has got to get a body on 34 White. Janae Hubbard was wide open for the offensive board and the putback. They need to box out, especially man-to-man. -man. Real easy to turn, steal your player. Janae Hubbard, so much support. Her family, about 10 family members here tonight cheering her on. She lives with her brother Derek, who is a tight end for Stanford. There's a look at Janae's father. Her brother Derek actually now lives with Janae, helps her out with basketball, also helps her with her training, her diet regime. Very close-knit family. She credits them to really helping her have such a breakout season this year. at least 
20 attempts from the line to even be in this one. Heather, the Phoenix made a run. They, they drew under 10, brought themselves close within seven. How did they do it, and how did they get back to that point? Well, you saw they were controlling the tempo in the second half. Didn't at all in the first 20 minutes of action. They were playing tighter, more solid defense, and they were a lot more active offensively. Got a couple of back doors, a couple of screen and rolls, found Norgard down low. I think the biggest switch, Rich, is that Norgard is playing on her low block in her comfort zone. In the first half, you saw her extend it a lot more. And a foul inside on UCLA.
Shepard. I am so impressed with her play tonight. We talk about a program. One of the differences between the men's game and the women's game, and Kathy Olivier is living proof of this, you have players that stay in programs for four years. UCLA does not have a senior on their squad, yet their starting five has 291 combined starts. That's 58 starts apiece on average without a senior. And you can't say enough about what that does for the chemistry, the experience in tight ball games. That is invaluable. And a lot of coaches out there watching just fear the Bruin next year. These starting five you're going to see again. 14-point ball game. Leonard on the baseline. Nice ball movement that time. Leonard taking one step in, finding the gap in the wide open baseline, Jay. Gomez. And she's fouled. Right after this one, Sports Center with Dave Feldman and Trey Wingo. The Gonzaga Bulldogs. You've heard of Matt Santangelo now, haven't you? Scores and highlights from a busy day in NCAA men's and women's. The recap of a wild night at Madison Square Garden. Gomez short on that free throw. You can see why Erica Gomez is on Mimi Griffin's top five list for point cards in the country. Just an amazing night. Eight assists. Dishing it off well above her average of 6.9 per game. Norgar draws contact. I don't think they'll count the bucket. The contact came before the shot. And that time Hubbard just a little bit anxious. She's been focusing so much on playing smart defense, moving her feet, not leaning, hustling to get into position. This time she just falls head over heels for the fake by Norgard. Nice little pump fake to draw the foul. Norgard gets two. Boy, can Norgard score a career-high 38 points earlier in the year against Loyola. Ironically, May Martin's career-high set a couple weeks ago, 38 points against SC. These two know how to put it in the bucket. 25 now for Norgard. 11-point UCLA lead. A three-seed and a 14-seed. Wisconsin Green Bay, winners of the Midwestern Collegiate Conference. And the Bruins, of course, co-champs in the Pac-10.
this presentation of the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament is brought to you by Nike.
Johnson, Green Bay has a chance. Now you don't want to burn too much time. You need to get a good shot quick. Leonard going strong through contact, and Gomez has the loose ball. A big sequence for UCLA. And Gomez is lucky she didn't pick up a flagrant foul with those elbows. And Knutson and Gomez going at it a little bit. Knutson not liking those elbows. Here's another look. Not a very smart shot off the backboard. The Gomez hustle wants to make sure she keeps it. No elbows yet, but there they are. Gomez, fiery, intense competitor. And a good free throw shooter. 75%. Double bonus, 10th team foul. He misses the first. Kevin Borsep wants a timeout. The Phoenix with a full timeout. UCLA trying to finish the deal at Holly Pavilion. I'm here with an exciting medical announcement. Doctors have learned that Monistat 1 keeps working for days to cure a yeast infection. Monistat 1, one dose from the number one doctor recommended brand.
in the round of 32. They played Alabama on the road. We've shown you the controversial ending. A lot of talk about it. Wisconsin Green Bay has to wonder about the end of the first half. Had the Bruins not made that big run, this would be obviously a much closer game. Yeah, if they'd only played the second 20 minutes of this game, the Phoenix would be in a much better situation. Norgard with a two-point takedown. Martin went down. And Melata Martin, her back okay, and that's good news, headed back to the line. Sports Center coming up next. Yeah, this crowd doesn't like to see Melana Martin go down, and they're all happy to see a smile on her face. Of course, Martin, bothered by those discs midway through the Pac-10 season, had an epidural shot, caused a cerebral fluid leak, if you can stay with me on this, which forced migraines two weeks out of school, out of practice, out of basketball entirely, until that cut was healed. And May Martin saying she's playing as pain-free as she has all season long. Good on Monday night. That's painful just listening to it. Final seconds, Tilke. Krieger with the shot, a 20 second timeout with five seconds left. It's a seven point game. And Wisconsin Green Bay doing all they can. Kathy Olivier and the Bruins about to head into the next round, waiting. Kentucky, the number six seed. The Bruins advancing to Monday night here at Pauley Pavilion against Kentucky right here on ESPN. Southwest Missouri State and Colorado State on ESPN2 on Sunday night. And it's a long season, but don't forget the UCLA Bruins beat Kentucky by 10, 64-54 in November, the opening tournament in Hawaii of this basketball season. And a quick foul. He's in order for Wisconsin Green Bay. Gomez. No, they won't foul. They didn't get the steal. They 